am Beatrice Ives Wells. Hello, everyone. I was born in Springfield, Illinois, 1881. My father, Benjamin, was a coal merchant and did quite well in that business. His father, John, served as secretary to the Illinois Board of Trade and was good friends with Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. We moved from Springfield to Chicago when my father formed a coal company there. My mother, Lucy, was a pianist. I also learned to play at an early age. She and I would perform in Chicago in concert halls where I was known as Trixie. <laughs> One young man seemed to like to hang around the stage door after performances. Soon he and I were seeing each other on a regular basis. My parents weren't particularly fond of Mr. Richard Wells, though he was quite well off due to some inventions that he had patented. <laughs> on November 21st, 1903, Richard and I were married in Chicago. We settled into a modest home in Kenosha, just around the corner from his mother, whom you'll meet. <laughs> The following year, in that same home, Richard and I had our first child, Richard Ives Wells. Unfortunately, he was not quite what we had expected. Lacking a strong intellect, he had a terrible stammer and seemed dull. I tried to busy myself with civic enterprises I left Dickie in the capable hands of a servant. I was the first female in Wisconsin to hold an elected position, when in 1914, I was elected to the Kenosha Unified, excuse me, the Unified School System, and to the school board. My friend, Mary Bradford, was superintendent at the time. We had to work hard to get the men on the board to take us seriously. Our second son was born May 6th, 1915. And made front page news, do you remember? Yes. <laughs> we named him George Orson Wells, after his great grandfather, Orson Sherman Head, whom you just met, mm -hmm. and his great uncle, George Head. I believe children are as capable of absorbing and understanding music and literature as any adult. So I read to my boys classic literature from an early age. When I would visit other adults in town, I would take Georgie with me so that he could benefit from local artists and intellectuals. After my father died, my mother moved in with us. Shortly after, it was apparent that she was dying of stomach cancer. A long, painful death. And when the morphine no longer alleviated her pain, her screams of agony permeated our home. A doctor had just moved to Kenosha from Chicago. His name was Maurice Bernstein. My mother became a patient of Dr. Maurice Bernstein. Oh, and his devotion to her was touching. I was drawn to him, and he to me, and little Georgie. He was intrigued with Georgie's intellect. Soon Maurice became a regular visitor to our home, much to my husband's chagrin. Richard and I grew further apart. Maurice gave me the attention that Richard never did. My mother died in 1917. A few years later, we decided to move to Chicago. Maurice moved to Chicago as well. Shortly after we moved, Richard and I divorced. Maurice moved in with me and little Georgie and Richard lived with Dickie in a hotel. I began feeling ill, and the doctor gave the diagnosis. I had hepatitis. Dickie was away at uh, the Todd School in Woodstock, Illinois. 
But Georgie was still at home. So Richard, Richard moved back in to care for me and Georgie. Thank you. Ten days after Georgie's birthday, excuse me, four days after Georgie's birthday, May 10th, 1924, I passed away. Beatrice Hives was a beauty. <laughs> she was intelligent. Intelligent, yes. But oh, what a fucker. I, uh, I, uh, we, uh, maybe I was a. A tr uh, drawn to her strong personality, or maybe she reminded me of my mother. Uh, uh, regardless of the initial attraction, our differences proved too too many and too strong for our marriage to survive. Yes, I'm I'm Dick Wells, the ex-husband. I uh, I was born. November 12th, 1872 in St. Joseph, Missouri. The only child of Richard and Mary Wells. Shortly after I was born, they moved to uh, Kenosha. Um, uh, and we lived at uh, uh, my grandfather Hitt's house. Uh, now, I don't remember him since he died when I was two and a half. Now, I tinkered around with various inventions. Uh, I received a, a patent in uh, 1903 for acetylene uh, gas heater. And shortly after, a patent received uh, for a bicycle now. My uncle George Yule and I decided that we would with an open Badger Brass, Badger Brass, uh, where we produced uh, bicycle vans and, and later automobile vans. Uh, my, uh, uh, I, I, I was in charge of disbursements of money for uh, for uh, investments and. Um, and uh, our employees. Uh, in the next 13 years, I received seven more patents for lights, uh, uh, elect electrical connectors, uh, uh, a cataloging chart, uh, and an adjustable light socket. Uh, maybe it was the high profile of my job. But I, I, I must tell you, uh, I, I continued to tinker around, and uh, I, uh, I, I, I introduced a uh, auto bus car to the city of Kenosha in 1911. It it, uh, it it could it could hold 20 passengers, and um, uh, it, what was new to this. Uh, was uh, the the uh, way we collected the, the fares. Uh, previously, there had to be a conductor that went around and collected the fares. But after this, a machine, uh, a money-taking machine, was located right next to the driver. And I understand all buses have this type of machine now. Now, at, it maybe it was my high profile job or, or maybe my marriage or our disappointment in our son but I hit the bottle a lot more well, I uh, Trixie was always uh, planning some some uh, some a concert or or she was uh, she was uh, 
are battling some local cause. I, uh, I uh, became quite wealthy uh, with my invention and I retired when I was 46 years of age when Georgie was only two. That same year, Mother Lucy died. And a few years later, we moved to Chicago. Our, our move to Chicago didn't improve our marriage. So I, I moved out and then we got a divorce. A few years later, when Georgie was eight, Trixie became seriously ill. What a fool. Sure, we were divorced, but she still was the mother of my children. And a good mother, too. <laughs> I, I moved back in, and Maurice and I took care of her until the bitter end. Maurice and I worked together for the best interests of our little Georgie. We sent him to Trixie's sister where he could be with her and, and his cousins. We, uh, uh, Maurice and I agreed that little Georgie needed formal education, so I, I sent him to Todd's school in Woodstock, Illinois. Same place there that Dickie went to for a short time. When Dickie was 23, he was committed to the Kankakee Mental Health Institute for the next 10 years. In 1930, I took Georgie on a trip with me to China and Japan. It's the last good time I can remember. I died in my hotel room December 28, 1930. <laughs> Georgie was only 15 and an orphan. <laughs> Who would take care of our little Georgie? <laughs> As a concert pianist, I... I try to enhance the cultural experience of my fellow citizens. I organize piano recitals and uh, choral society concerts. Yes, I invited gifted musicians who are on tour from around the world. He didn't, yeah, Richard didn't always oh, run with such highbrow. I'm not into that highbrow No, stuff. Hey, you always called it that. I, if you ask me about music, I, I, a minute I heard ragtime, I was booked. Oh. Uh, the drums, mm. uh, the horns. The ragtime piano got my feet to tapping and my and my fingers snapping and oh and uh, and movies they were another great great diversion from life 
uh, I could go to a movie and, and, and imagine that I was in a far off land, and, and, and in an exotic land, Richard, with, living Richard, in a new way. And if you could just see the negative influence movies have on our youth. That is why I headed the censorship board, protesting the immorality of this debauchery disguised as entertainment. Oh, get off your high horse, Trixie. It, all this is fun and, and a good, good time. And, and uh, none of the people are concerned about the things that you're concern, concerned with. It's entertainment for Pete's sake. Oh. At least one good thing came from our marriage. Our son, George. I made sure that he went with me to the homes of artists and intellectuals. Why, at his most impressionable age, would, would I subject him to mindless literature like Auntie's Nice Kit Kat or Little Sister's Silly Red Ball? There would be no baby talk around my son. It's true that our little Georgie was an exceptionally intelligent, mm. right? Yes. Child. He, he would not be inhibited by by uh, uh, his searches for for the things that interest him. We gave him full reign. Mm -hmm. uh, not everyone uh, agreed with it. Well, not <laughs> all people. In the in the town, agreed with our hands-off approach, mm -mm. but he got the last laugh. Yes, yes, he did. Our Georgie did well, and I'm sure everyone, everyone realized that we had our best interests with Georgie in mind when we gave him that full reign. Yes, we took care. Our little Georgie. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you for coming. Very nice.